good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. With me in the studio now is Professor Martin Kuhlmann. He's a nephrologist here in Berlin, so he's a kidney specialist, so to say. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Hi. The young men in our report we just saw um, were suffering from a renal inflammation. How do these happen and, and what's the cause of it? And how, can you do anything to prevent them? Well, in a young age, this is a frequent cause of kidney disease. If you look at the whole population, it's a rare cause. Um, these uh, kind of inflammations, which are called uh, glomerulonephritis, um, occur in many instances in relation to a bacterial or viral infection as a consequence when the body is producing antibodies and the, there's a kind of autoimmune um, disease. So not, they're not a real inflammation disease or um, not, not a real bacterial disease then? It's not an infection, it's an inflammation of the kidney uh, tissue. Mm. And can you do anything to prevent them? Well, if you want to prevent kidney disease, I think um, you have to take care of your blood pressure. You have to, if you're a diabetic, you have to take care of your blood sugar but uh, there is no real way to prevent uh, glomerulonephritis. Okay, and, and they are not the most causes for dialysis, I guess, glomerulonephritis. Um, so, so what is the, the most frequent cause for putting patients on dialysis? Well, the patient we just saw in the, uh, in the uh, uh, movie, um, I think we have about 10% of those patients on dialysis. The majority of patients on dialysis has either diabetes mm -hmm. or high blood pressure as an underlying disease. And, and once being on dialysis, can your kidneys ever refunction after failure? Once being on dialysis as a diabetic or hypertensive patients, the kidneys will not regain any function. Mm -hmm. So they will completely lose their function and the patient has to either stay on dialysis or go through transplantation. Mm -hmm. um, renal insufficiency is often only detected in later stages um, as there are no, no real symptoms. So, so how can I detect renal failure? The first signs of a kidney disease occur in the urine. You see some blood, red blood cells in the urine if you look by microscope, or you find some uh, proteins in the urine which normally don't occur in the urine. So you can detect these changes by a test strip. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use these traps, test strips uh, in the office, at the, at the doctor's office. And can you go to a pharmacy and do this for the cell, yourself? Um, usually you, you, you do this with the doctor. Mm, okay, and, and if you uh, detect kidney diseases early, is there a best, better way to, to treat it? If you detect them early, we can make a firm diagnosis. This is done by kidney biopsy. Mm -hmm. And once we know the diagnosis, we, can, we have various ways to treat kidney diseases. Mm -hmm. And you can successfully tre treat kidney disease and prevent dialysis. Okay, and after a kidney transplant, how long can you expect to live nowadays? Well, if you except a living transplant, uh, for example, living, uh, from, from a living donor, um, you can expect to, the, that the kidney survives 10, 15 years. You, you, yourself, you can survive longer because you can have a second transplant or a third transplant. So, so it's about survival of the kidney. Okay, so in, in, and if the kidney fails again, you can be put on dialysis again. Then you go back on dialysis, and then you can go through transplantation again. Okay. Professor Kuman, why do certain people repeatedly suffer from pyelonephritis? I think the most frequent cause is that the antibiotic that was prescribed was not directed against the real um, and, uh, bacterium. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then there is some uh, overgrowing of the bacteria and it returns. The other cause is that um, patients may not take the antibiotic as long as prescribed. So that's another reason. And the third reason is there may be some changes in the urinary tract system so that the urine, instead of going the correct way, goes back, flows back into the uh, left pelvis or right pelvis and then the bacteria grow in the, in, in the kidney and you have pyelonephritis. Mm. And is the cause of antibiotics always the right way to treat um, pyelonephritis? Because I always, in my, my uh, surgery, I have to discuss with all the patients that they have to take the antibiotics. They always don't want to take it. Well, with pyelonephritis, you should take antibiotics because the bacteria spread in the kidney and there's a risk that if you don't treat it, that the bacteria spread into the blood. We see that frequently in the hospital, even with young, uh, young people. 
And uh, so if you, you should treat a pyelonephritis at least uh, for 10 days with antibiotics. Okay. And I always tell my patients to drink plenty of water, plenty of fluids. Um, so how important is um, drinking water, or drinking fluids for our kidneys? Um, if you have a pyelonephritis, it's very important. You have to kind of flush the bacteria out of the system. And by drinking water, the, and the, the anti antibiotics are diluted in the water, so they are filtered by the kidneys. And the antibiotic works from within the kidney, from the, within the urine, so it gets to where it should work. So that's why you have to drink water. In, if you don't have pyelonephritis, the kidneys take care of your uh, water system and uh, kidneys are very perfect in um, concentrating the urine and diluting the urine. So if you are thirsty, you should drink. If you're not thirsty, you don't have to drink. And is it really water or are there different drinks you should take? Our viewer Arash Haderi wants to know what kind of drink is best for our kidneys? Well, we do recommend water. Um, on the other hand, if you want to prevent uh, pyelonephritis or urinary tract infection, there are some uh, studies showing a slight effect of cranberry juice, for example. So that's what we do recommend to some patients. Mm -hmm. and, and what about very hard wa water with uh, calcium in it? Our viewer Hajira Raja wants to know if drinking hard water can harm the kidneys. Usually it cannot harm because the kidney takes care of the uh, calcium. But if you are suffering from kidney stones, for example, if you are suffering from kidney stones composed, composed out of calcium and phosphorus or calcium and oxalate, then if the kidney filters the calcium, then you have a higher concentration of calcium in the kidney and that goes directly to the stones and increases the size of the stones. Mm -hmm. And if you want to treat kidney stones, I mean, there are a lot of things you can do in Western medicine, but what about natural remedies? Can you take any natural remedies for kidney stones? Well, drinking a lot of water, of course, you're diluting again. That's one way. Um, there are very few. I think uh, you can take uh, fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables. That's also recommended because this is more um, alkalizing the urine. Mm. Okay. Professor Kuman, thanks so much for being with us in the studio today. Thank you.